Barbara Eden and Elvis were two icons of their time. Their beauty and talent entranced audiences, so what could possibly go wrong when they were put in the same film together? Well, plenty of mistakes were made when filming Flaming Star. It was the victim of poor marketing, a culture of racial segregation, poor box office returns, and more. Keep watching to learn why Barbara Eden's movie with Elvis was an absolute disaster. The Making of Flaming Star Colonel Parker worked with Elvis more than almost anyone else. They were together since his first film, Love Me Tender, was released in 1956. He negotiated a contract for two more films starring the King. Four years later, work began on Flaming Star. Elvis was almost finished with his time in the Army in 1960. He was filming G.I. Blues when David Weisbart approached him with the script for Flaming Star. It was based on the Claire Huffaker novel Flaming Lance. It told the story of a half-Kiowa Indian named Pacer. He gets pulled in two different directions when his mother's tribe begins fighting with the citizens of his town. The film wasn't originally intended for Elvis. It was written as a dramatic piece with Marlon Brando in the lead and Frank Sinatra as his brother. Elvis and Steve Forrest turned out to be the better fit for their parts thanks to their looks and accents. David asked for a rewrite once the final cast was planned out. Claire took two weeks to complete it and feels it may have made the story better than the original. Filming began on the Conho Movie Ranch in Thousand Oaks, California on August 12, 1960. Elvis doubted his ability to pull off the serious script, especially in a scene where his character attacks the doctor who didn't arrive in time to save his mother. He wanted more time to prepare and kept pushing filming as far back as possible, but the director was amazed by the final take. Elvis was in better shape than he'd been in years after his service in the military. He had the athletic ability to film convincing fight and chase scenes and ride his horse like a true cowboy. He also showed off a knack for convincing facial expressions. Despite plenty of training, there were several missteps on set. Elvis went sailing down an embankment when he misjudged a punch in a fight scene with Steve Forrest. Steve got dragged by a horse in a different scene. The set closed on October 4th, but Colonel Parker left it open for visitors, tourists, and journalists. It helped drum up interest in the project, but wasn't enough to keep it safe from poor box office returns later. Cutting the Music Elvis wanted to focus on acting for Flaming Star instead of singing. He wanted to be taken seriously as an actor and be known for something other than musicals with no substance. Flaming Star had almost no songs. The only one of his films that had less music was Charo, another western that featured only one song. The original version of the title song, Black Star, can be found on the 1991 box set Collector's Gold. A four-song version of Flaming Star was shown on November 25th at the Academy Theater in Inglewood, California. It got such a poor reception that most of the original music was cut. Summer Kisses' Winter Tears was removed after negative reactions from preview audiences. They laughed at him singing around a campfire with Indians playing war drums. The original version can only be heard on the German Elvis Double Features CD collection. Elvis wanted the song Britches cut out because he was meant to sing it while riding his horse and didn't think this would look believable. He made the right call because it also elicited laughter from preview audiences. The title track stayed at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 for seven weeks. Before we tell you more about Flaming Star, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. The Reception of Flaming Star 20th Century Fox focused their marketing efforts for Flaming Star on spreads in magazines. They put out a full-page spread in the November 2, 1960 issue of Variety and said it would be one of their four primary films for the holiday season. They also put out a two-page ad on November 16th. One of the major problems with these ads was the unfulfilled promises they set forth. They told theater owners there would be four songs in the film, even though there were only two in the final releases. Variety's in-house reviewer gave his opinion on Flaming Star on its national release date, December 21st, 1960. He predicted it would become successful and appeal to a larger audience than Elvis's previous films. Flaming Star was a critical darling and gave Elvis the best reviews of his career. They called his performance believable and powerful and said it showed he was improving as an actor. G.I. Blues came out a month before Flaming Star and earned almost twice as much, bringing in $10 million in ticket sales. It reached number two in Variety's list of top grossing movies and number 14 on its list of highest box office earnings. Flaming Star had a budget of $1.7 million and only earned $2 million. It also only reached number 12 on the Variety box office survey. The disparity showed that audiences preferred seeing Elvis in light musicals. The release of Flaming Star changed the trajectory of his career because studios gave him roles audiences would like instead of the serious fare he craved to sink his teeth into. How Barbara Eden got the role and why she thinks it failed 
There were several important side characters to fill in Flaming Star to cast, and they all added to the story. Dolores Del Rio came back into the world of film after 10 years and added a compassionate heir to Pacer's mother, Nettie. John McIntyre brought dignity to his father, Sam. One of the most difficult to cast was potential love interest Rosalind Pierce. Barbara Steele was the first choice, but her British accent was too strong for a Western. David Weisbart also allegedly thought she wasn't a good actress and was too tall. A serious fight caused her to leave. The filmmakers then had to go to their next choice, Barbara Eden. She was a relative unknown at the time, but David thought she was beautiful and a fitting replacement. Barbara was thrilled to take on the role. She appreciated that playing a cowgirl would mean she didn't have as much focus on her clothes and makeup. Her co-stars still made her nervous, though. Barbara wasn't sure about meeting a major star like Elvis. Her sister had convinced her to watch him on The Ed Sullivan Show, and she was instantly impressed. She thought he had an impressive level of stage presence and sex appeal. What she didn't know was that he was nervous to meet her as well. He was already a fan of her husband, Michael Ansara, who played the role of Cochise in Broken Arrow. She asked him how he ever had time to watch TV with his busy schedule, but he admitted it was a necessary escape. He watched it at night while hiding in his hotel room to avoid the crowds of raving fans. Barbara and Elvis worked well together and got along like old friends. She was impressed by his gentlemanly manner, his dedication to his craft, and even his surprising ability to ride a horse like a seasoned pro. She said in an interview that Flaming Star got excellent reviews but, quote, didn't make a penny. She believes one of the primary reasons for this was that the king of rock and roll only sang two songs in it. She also says the poor financial results were a shame because it was one of the only films where he got to show off his true talent. Flaming Star's Legacy Flaming Star is one of the most obscure films in the Elvis canon, but it's still beloved amongst his fans and those who like a serious western. It also made a major impact on films and the culture of the world. Wa Ni Ota inducted Elvis into the Los Angeles Indian Tribal Council. It was a way to honor the impact he made by portraying a half-Indian. Not everyone appreciated the mix of races. Flaming Star came out at a time when fears of miscegenation were rampant. The movie was banned in several countries, including South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, in an effort to silence its message of unity between races. Flaming Star even appeared in famous pieces of art. Andy Warhol painted a diptych of Elvis's cowboy cane. He used it to make several silk screens, the largest of which is titled Elvis Times Eleven and still hangs in the Andy Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh. They made far more money than the film, selling for over $380 million. Despite its poor box office returns, the British Film Institute put Flaming Star on its list of their top 100 essential westerns in the 1980s. It forever stands as an important film, and one of many where critical opinion and box office returns don't match up. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you ever see Flaming Star? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.